feel the boyish excitement of going to victory lane. It has been so long for Richard Childress Racing and Ryan Newman, his driver in the 31 Chevrolet. But in Arizona, they pulled the stunner with Michael Waltrip. I'm Chris Myers, Larry McReynolds coming along in just a moment. The storylines coming into the fourth race of the year, right? Where, of course, the Joey Logano, Kyle Busch. Could Kevin Harvick continue to dominate in Arizona? Could Martin Truex and a Toyota win back-to-back? Uh, -back? And then uh, this out of nowhere, seemingly, an overtime win for Ryan Newman. Yeah, and we saw domination in Kyle Busch's car yesterday in practice. It was really fast all day long. And when the race started today, he meticulously worked his way to the front. And in that final stage, he had them put away, Chris. But it was a late caution brought out by who? Joey Logano that changed the complexion of this whole event. And it looked like for a while Chase Elliott might get his first win of the year. Then Kyle Busch, could he get his first or first ever for Chase? But for Kyle, his first of the year. So let's show you the race in 90, how it turned out. We're going to hook up later with Ryan Newman from Victory Lane. But hope you were watching. It was hot and getting hotter. Temperature up in the 90s. But in the car, it, well, you saw 108 to start. Maybe got up to over 143 degrees. Under caution, Brad Keselowski, rear tire changer, slow to stop. He was running second at the time. Great racing for the lead right before stage one, and Logano gets stage one. And I just love the way these guys were sprinting for this stage victory. Look at Logano, Kyle Larson all the way off the track. Brad Keselowski recovered to be a part of this. But at the end of stage one, it was Joey Logano that took the checker. Kurt Busher, Daytona 500 winner, second straight week with a battery issue in the Monster Energy Stewart Haas Ford. Meanwhile, not much of a factor. Lap 85. Logano, look at this. How about Both three wide Larson for the lead? Elliott, exciting. And Elliott would take the lead, go on as Logano is later caught speeding, pit road speeding violation. So he fell from fifth to 32nd. Chase Elliott, your stage two winner. And then tough on lap 121, Matt wow. Benson. Look how hard into the outside wall. And I'm telling you, Chris, the brakes were right on the edge of burning up the right front tires. We saw it happen 40, 45 laps into the run. That's what bit Kenseth. And that was 121 to go. It'd be a factor later. Martin Truex with problems on pit road over a hose. Oh, man, he got hosed there, and he's going to have to stop, get the hose pulled away from his car. That took away any chance for victory for the 78. It was team. heated at intense. Look at Ty Dillon and Austin Dillon, brothers going at each other. What, a brotherly shove? Who sees that? these days well, those you, guys were racing hard we remember you and Daryl going through that six laps to go Kyle Busch dominating Logano with the tire problem his wife's reaction tells the story I'm sure Kyle felt the same way and then she knew there would be drama she knew there were going to be people take chances stay out be on those old tires that's what Ryan Newman did and look at the run he got down into turn one a terrific restart from the veteran driver leaving everyone in the dust in the desert and Ryan Newman for Richard Childress, they withstood the heat, physically demanding race, but it felt good to win the Monster Energy Cup race and the first win that Ryan Newman had for Richard Childress Racing. Mike, this is stunning here. The odds in, during the week were 80 to 1 in Las Vegas for Ryan Newman to win this race. This morning he went off at 45 to 1 and pulled off the shot. Glad to have you watching FS1 at Victory Lane. And let's go to Victory Lane, where 39-year-old Ryan Newman in that Granger Chevrolet of Richard Childress Racing pulled off a stunning upset, led the final six laps. It was an amazing, dramatic uh, victory. And uh, Ryan, first, congratulations. Tell us just how drained you are physically and emotionally. Uh, more physically, just cooked uh, inside the race car. It was so hot that about lap 150, I got the chills, which means your body's overheating. So um, just an awesome day for our Granger Chevrolet. I have to thank Caterpillar, Coca-Cola, uh, monster for supporting our series, um, you know, Kalahari Advanced Hydraulics, sorry, Aggressive Hydraulics, <laughs> and uh, all the all the great uh, all the great people at RCR and ACR who have given us this, uh, this opportunity. It's um, just an amazing an amazing day for me. It's been so long since I've been in Victory Lane. Um, I just can't thank everybody enough. You know, Ryan, they can't thank you enough for sure. You know, when an athlete just leaves it all on the court, gave it all he got. When the temperatures were the hottest today, that's when you were at your best. You drove all the way up to seventh position on that late green flag run, running times faster than our leader, Kyle Busch. What were you thinking inside the car? Could you get there? Uh, I didn't think I could get there on a green flag run. Uh, we started too far back, and we were not that good of a car on a short run. Excuse me, but an amazing car on a long run. And uh, Luke made the ultimate call for us to stay out. 
and uh, just uh, you know put herself in contention for a victory, and I was able to pull it off. So um, you know, just you, you never know. Sometimes I was hoping that it was going to be a uh, race to the uh, overtime line, but uh, either way, just proud of the guys, uh, everybody at uh, Granger and Caterpillar and Chevrolet that uh, make this thing happen. Richard Childress, all the guys at the shop, RCR and ECR. Just a total collective effort. It's been so long since I've been in victory lane, and it feels so good. I wish my wife and kids and my family were here, but uh, I guess uh, we'll get to celebrate when I get home. Yeah, and hopefully they're they're watching you uh, be a, a big star and and the idea of Kyle Busch having the best car but then the Logano caution comes out uh, what we saw the, the reaction from the Kyle Busch team what was your uh, reaction did you think hey this is my ticket I guess there's a little dramatic irony there if you think about it but uh, you know just uh, you know we were in the right place at the right time and did what we needed to do and um, you know you, if a couple guys would have stayed out in front of us it may not have happened but uh, either way just proud of the guys that uh, you know give me this opportunity it's like I said it's been so long I didn't forget how to do it but uh, you know after so while for, for so long you you get thinking to yourself man is it just that tough are you losing it and uh, we didn't lose it today well you could tell with the lap times the way that car is running talk about your owner Richard Childress he puts his heart and soul into that team brings competitive cars week in and week out to finally return him where he belongs to victory lane it's got to be a great feeling yeah I'm gonna throw Richard under the bus here a little bit he uh, he told us going to the driver's meeting this morning he goes man we just got to finish one we've been struggling with uh, running good this year and, and, and not having any finishes to show it so uh, I guess we, sh we showed him and uh, so proud of him and Judy and everybody that gives us this opportunity um, it's just uh, it's special. It's been so long, uh, and I think the, the the length between victories makes it that much more special for me. So I don't want to wait that long again. But um, in saying that, it's um, just an amazing feeling. All the guys on the team. Yeah, to tell you how far back for Richard Childress racing the last win period for him in, in Cup. Kevin Harvick was his driver here in Phoenix. For you though, this is your second overtime uh, Phoenix win. Let's talk about that restart, Ryan. Can you can you take us through it? Those were so key today for different leaders throughout the race, and then you were able to hang on and close the door in overtime. Well, I just just wanted to take the outside that was the first key for me was to be able to pick the outside uh, I had started inside us outside of Stenhouse a couple times during the day and I knew he was shifting but um, usually by the time he grabs uh, fourth I get a good enough burst off the corner that I could pull ahead so I did not know if uh, the 42 had two tires or four tires or what but I knew they were better tires than mine um, but in saying that I had the track position so I was looking in the MIA post mirror uh, going having a little reflection back to uh, fall of 2014 when I used eight tires and I saw him down there <laughs> <laughs> but um, he did a great job, raced me clean, and that's all you can ask for. I mean, it was it was good hard racing. It was a misfortune of somebody else that gave us uh, the opportunity today, and we'll take it. We were reflecting to that, too, and wondered what would happen to Kyle. We talked to Kyle before the race and said, can you get all four tires down on the bottom and make that pass? When were you confident that you could hold him off? You exited, two with a pretty good gap. Did you feel good then? Yeah, when I had three car lengths coming off of two coming to the checkered, um, I knew that if I got it into three hard enough, no matter how hard he dove it in there, he wasn't going to have enough grip to even door me. So um, I did that and uh, still had enough room to come off turn four. So just just an amazing finish. Um, looked like we maybe would have been able to held him off for a lap or two more, but um, either way, that's all it took. <laughs> and, and Ryan, it, it's obvious you enjoy what you do, but through that stretch of the 127 races when the wins weren't there, and whenever we talk to you, whether it was media day every year or you've always been very respectful, Respectful. Did you waver at all about, am I doing the right thing? Is that next victory ever going to come again? Well, it's a privilege to do what we do. I mean, you can't uh, take that for granted. There's so many people out here that love and have the talent to do what I do. Uh, but um, it's, it's just it's, a, it's an honor to be able to drive these race cars, even when they're not good. I mean, even when you're struggling, it's it's still fun to go out there and compete. It's the ultimate team sport in my mind. And uh, again, thank Richard, Luke, and all the guys uh, for, for making this happen today. So a big victory in the desert. You, what do you feel more like doing right now, having a beer or throwing up? <laughs> I'm closer to throwing up. I don't drink, so uh, Coca-Colas have been nice, but um, I just, uh, I'm really kind of cramped up right now and, and uh, <laughs> sitting down and enjoying sitting down. Have a, have a Coke and, and all that time with animals on the farm. We called you a good old farm boy and held up in a, in a physically grueling race. Congratulations. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you in California. Yeah, thank you, guys. I always say the uh, the largest sponge holds the most water, so it worked today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No way, All right. Thanks, Ryan. See a sense of humor. He's got that dry <laughs> sense of humor in a place where a dry heat would get 144 degrees in the car today. Wow. So. And the, the peak temperature was right when the checker flag fell. And that's when the metal in the cars were, were the hottest. And 
and that's when the drivers were the most fatigued. Great job, way to fight. We call Ryan a farm boy. He farms <laughs> up in North Carolina. He proved he was farmer tough today. A sense of humor in Victory Lane. They were, they were sweating it out, but the 31 car in Victory Lane with Ryan Newman, a long shot. In fact, for the first four races this year, the favorite hasn't won. He's the favorite son in Arizona, putting that sticker on his car for the first time in nearly four years.